Now's the time to save 30% on wedding jewelry, only on BlueNile.com. Make sure your wedding ring is the one with your pick of diamond and lab-grown diamond bands, all hand-finished and graded for excellence. Or surprise her with something blue she'll love for life, like a stunning pair of sapphire earrings. Blue Nile's jewelry experts are available 24-7 to help, from fit questions to style advice. Right now, get up to 30% off at BlueNile.com. BlueNile.com. When you need mealtime inspiration, it's worth shopping Kroger, where you'll find over 30,000 mouth-watering choices that excite your inner foodie. And no matter what tasty choice you make, you'll enjoy our everyday low prices, plus extra ways to save, like digital coupons worth over $600 each week. You can also save up to $1 off per gallon at the pump with fuel points. More savings and more inspiring flavors make shopping Kroger worth it every time. Kroger, fresh for everyone. Fuel restrictions apply. Welcome into 49ers Access. My name is Sterling Bennett, and today did we get massive, massive news regarding Brandon Ayuk's contract negotiations with the San Francisco 49ers. While, yes, there is no football actually being played, all of our eyes are turned towards when will the Niners and Brandon Ayuk put pen to paper and sign a contract extension But as of today, things might be looking very, very bleak in regards to the Niners actually signing Ayuk to an extension, keeping him here uh, past this upcoming season. I want to thank you all for hitting 1,000 subscribers over the weekend. Thank you so much. The fact that many of you take the time out of your day to either watch or listen, to have me on in the background or on during your commute, just talking Niners with you. Thank you so much. It means it means a lot to me that you go out of your way. You have 24 hours in the day, and you spend at least one of them listening and watching to me. So thank you so, so much. And let's dive into what transpired this morning from Brandon Ayuk and the Niners. Okay, so the last time we talked about Ayuk in San Francisco... Mike Silver had reported saying that the last offer San Francisco had on the table for Brandon Ayuk was $26 million per year. We talked about, is that fair? Was it, is it unfair? Where is his contract value? Where should it be? We talked about if Ayuk deserves the $30 million of the Amon Ross St. Browns, or if you want to get crazy with it, the Justin Jeffersons of the world. We talked about how that that's not really where Ayuk's value is on a team like San Francisco. But then this morning, we were all nestled in our beds, dreaming of sugar plums and waiting for the next summer day to come. Brandon Ayuk decided to stir the pot. And I'm not talking just stir. I'm talking whisk and, and get that thing with the electrical mixer. And he has lit Niners Twitter and the fan base on fire fired this morning because Brandon Ayuk via his own TikTok account posted a video of him FaceTiming his former Arizona State quarterback and teammate Jaden Daniels who was now the Washington Commanders quarterback number two overall pick in this past year's draft and as they're FaceTiming Brandon Ayuk says they said being the Niners They don't want me back. Well, do the Niners actually want Brandon Ayuk back? All the assumptions, all the news and the reports were, yes, they want Brandon Ayuk back just at the right asking price, at the right value. Now, Brandon Ayuk believes he's a $30 million player. San Francisco obviously does not believe he's a $30 million player, but All of the news was these two teams, these two parties, Ayuga and the Niners, want to get a deal done. This morning, it feels like all of that was thrown out the window. And from what Ayuk is telling us, because that's what this was, this was him telling us, 
This was him trying to create some some noise, drop some news to keep his name out there and put some pressure on San Francisco to tell us they don't want me back to hopefully increase his value. So do the San Francisco 49ers actually want Brandon Ayuk back? Did they tell him? Did the Niners tell him they did not want him back? I think there's a clear clear answer to this and the answer is yes the san francisco 49ers did indeed tell brandon Ayuk they did not want him back not because of how great he is as a great player not because of who he is as a player not because who he is as a person i can almost guarantee you the san francisco 49ers sat across from Ayuk's agent and maybe even Ayuk himself and said look we want you to be here. We want to extend you. We want to have you here with Brock Purdy, Ricky Pearsall, and the rest of this offense and be a, a mainstay, a cornerstone receiver on this team in the future. But for what you're asking of us, if it is indeed $30 million, we don't want you back at that price. So yes, the San Francisco 49ers did tell Brandon Ayuk in some way in some form or fashion, we don't want you back. But it's not because of the amazing player he is, not because of what he means to the locker room and the roster. They don't want him back because of the asking price. So, yes, Ayuk is not wrong. They did tell him, we don't want you back. Just simply because of what you're asking of us, which is $30 million, well, that's the assumed asking price, he has put out there on the table, which I don't blame him. No one's blaming Ayuk for that. But I couldn't help but think that we've gone through this many times before. Fred Warner, which was, I think, arguably the easiest one of all of these, right? You knew they were going to pay Fred. They had to pay Fred. He was their starting Mike Linebacker coming off an all-pro year. They were going to pay Fred Warner. Nick Bosa was a given, albeit... Things got testy towards the end of will he, won't they, you know, play in week one against Pittsburgh. He obviously did. And then George Kittle. Those have been kind of the easy negotiations. Uh, and all those guys have been there week one, despite some bumps in the road along the way. Whereas the other really tough as nails, hard to negotiate. Will he get traded? Will he, will he be here next year? Negotiation was with Debo Samuel. And there are so many similarities between the Brandon Ayuk situation and the Debo Samuel situation. Now, the, the clearest one that comes to mind for me is because it mirrors what Brandon Ayuk did this morning. Brandon Ayuk this morning took to TikTok, knowing that's where all the young people are at, knowing that once he put the video out there saying they don't want me here, ESPN, Fox, me, David Lombardi, Larry Kruger, Grant Cohn, every journalist inside the room at Levi Stadium, the content creators immediately outside the room, and all the massive legacy journalists and media places are going to pick this up and run with this on a dry news, no, no NFL talking points Monday morning. It's after Father's Day. He knew if I can get this out now, everyone's going to latch on to it and they're going to jump into this and talk about it for hours and hours and hours like we are right now. That was the point to get the headlines and make people start talking about Brandon Ayuk, talking about who could trade for him, talking about what could San Francisco get for him, talking about will he be in San Francisco during the upcoming season. Go back to, I think it was now two years ago. What did Debo Samuel do? Debo Samuel's mother. Facebook lived a conversation that Debo Samuel was having with his agent, Tori Dandy, openly complaining about the Philadelphia Eagles paying A.J. Brown and the Niners not paying him. Openly talking about the contract negotiations he was having with San Francisco, and she put that on Facebook Live, knowing 
that people like me, people like you, people like David Lombardi, people like Grant Cohn, people like every other journalist on a dry, no NFL news Monday morning after Father's Day was going to pick that up and run wild with it because it stirs uh, speculation, it stirs the conversation, and it gets that pot all stirred up knowing that this only likely helps them get the extra few million dollars they're looking for. So what I you just did is out of the Debo Samuel handbook of how can we put more pressure on San Francisco now, where there are similarities, there's also a lot of differences. Uh, Tim Kawakami today put on X or Twitter and said that there were a lot of things said during negotiations with Debo Samuel two years ago that made Debo take things personal, which it goes back to what Debo Samuel said one to two weeks ago, that his his advice to Ayuk was, don't take things personal. It's really hard not to, but try not to. But Debo Samuel has gone or, or went many steps further than Ayuk's ever gone. Ayuk has never asked for a trade. Debo Samuel openly asked to be traded. Debo Samuel made things very public with going on Snapchat or, or being filmed in uh, in a club in Las Vegas, I believe, and and having his friends videotape the sign that says Debo Samuel staying with the Niners, and his friends cut to him like he not staying in San Francisco, he not coming back, along with asking for a trade and expecting one either on draft night or shortly prior to it. Um, we all heard of the Jets' godfather offer, and there was real concerns of if the first round doesn't pass uh, quickly enough, Debo Samuel could be out the door. Now, we know how things ended up, but Debo Samuel was much further down the rabbit hole of leaving, trying to actively get out of San Francisco, whereas Brandon Ayuk, he's never asked for a trade. They've never told him to look for a trade. Yes, they did field offers for him during the draft, because why would you not? It's draft night, it's a loaded class of receivers, there's Roma Dunze, there's Brian Thomas, there's Adonai Mitchell, there's Ricky Pearsall, who's now in San Francisco. There was plenty of talent in this receiver class that if a team missed out on a receiver, like the Jacksonville Jaguars, it would make sense for San Francisco to partner with them and trade Ayuk for a first-round pick. Now, obviously, that didn't take place. The Jaguars did get Brian Thomas. Um, but we're at a point where the Niners really can't trade Brandon Ayuk. The Niners certainly cannot point to the draft and say, man, we can trade you then, because that's far and far past. There's just nothing they can do, but take it that one step further. Brandon Ayuk's agent went on Twitter and X before the draft and dispelled many of the rumors, talked about how he didn't ask for a trade. <laughs> like, the Brandon Ayuk and his party have done almost the opposite of help themselves. They've been so quiet. They've been, you know, quiet as a mouse. We've heard nothing from them outside of today. And what does that tell you? That means they played the game, they were the nice partner, they didn't say much. Again, they were quiet, they did what San Francisco wanted them to do, they went to negotiation room, they put their offer on the table, they went back and forth a few times, San Francisco didn't budge, and now, as of this morning, they are full force putting on the pressure, telling San Francisco, okay, we were softballing you. We were having a good time. It was nice. It was, it, it was courteous. Now the game's gotten real. Now the game has gotten to a public point of we are openly telling people what's happening in the negotiation room, what's happening at the table. There's no longer secretive notes passed across table where you look down and go, okay, how about this instead? Now it's gone to ESPN's picking it up, Fox is picking it up, we're talking about it, others are talking about it, you and I care to a point of this is getting old, like Robbie439 says, 
This is getting old. Either get it done, make your piece that you're going to play on the fifth year option, or move on. The social media posts are childish and a good way to get a lot of fans to turn on you. Now, Robbie, I get what you're saying. I am someone that I don't I don't look at Ayuk negatively because let's be clear here. This is not the first time we've heard things from Ayuk's camp, mainly his girlfriend, maybe his fiance or wife, I think it's his girlfriend, and his brother. Remember back after the Super Bowl, <laughs> his girlfriend posts, this could be our last day in San Francisco. Everyone said, huh? What is she talking about? His brother, during the Super Bowl, posts on Instagram, this is why we're out of here, and posts pirate flags alluding to, we want to stay in Vegas to play with the Raiders. I mean, come on. It's like, it's not like this hasn't happened to fourth other players, Debo Samuel to a much worse degree, and it's not like this hasn't happened to some degree with the IU camp earlier this offseason. Now, it's again, it's becoming Ayuk himself now. Now, Ayuk hasn't asked for a trade, which is a great thing, right? Things haven't gotten to that point where I'm not completely worried about this. It's all a negotiation tactic. It's all a player wanting to get paid the money they think they deserve and trying to make a team like San Francisco, who is willing to play hardball until the Thursday prior to week number one, if not in the you know, middle of the year, to penny pinch and save a few million dollars. Hey, it's Kaylee Cuoco for Priceline. Ready to go to your happy place for a happy price? Well, why didn't you say so? Just download the Priceline app right now and save up to 60% on hotels. So whether it's Cousin Kevin's Kazoo concert in Kansas City, go Kevin! Or Becky's Bachelorette Bash in Bermuda. You never have to miss a trip ever again. So download the Priceline app today. Your savings are waiting. Go to your happy place for a happy price. Go to your happy price, Priceline. They want to make that team budge, and San Francisco is cemented into their spot saying, we ain't moving. It's like Leo from Wolf of Wall Street. I ain't leaving. We ain't leaving. That's exactly what San Francisco's doing here. I want to quickly say uh, what's up to Jimmy in the YouTube chat. What's going on, Jimmy? Niner Gang 209, what's going on? Uh, Ernie Chavez, what's going on, Ernie? Uh, Niner Gang 209 says that he does not want to pay Ayuk at $30 million a year. Um, if that's what Ayuk wants, I want to be very clear here. We do not know what Ayuk has asked for. We don't really know exactly what San Francisco has put on the table outside of what Mike Silver said, who is usually accurate. So the assumption is Ayuk wants 30 or close to 30. San Francisco said we'll pay you 26. My idea, my assumption was, if he wants 30, and San Francisco only wants to give him 26, make it 28 and a quarter, equal the Jalen Waddle deal, give him the same guaranteed money as Amon Ross St. Brown, and call it a day. He gets the best of both worlds. He gets the top five money in Jalen Waddle, and he gets a top five guarantee in Amon Ross St. Brown. Uh, Bobo says this. Actually, Bobo was here pre, pre-show. And says, I told you guys that Brandon Ayuk became expendable when Pearsall was drafted. They are sending a message to BA with that pick of Pearsall in round one, pick 31. Bobo also says, don't know if this kind of thing can be fixed. Um, I'm not saying this is you, Bobo. But I do think a lot of Niner fans, like Robbie, right? And says, this is getting old. I'm tired of this. Sign your deal or don't sign your deal, play or don't play, but pick an alley, pick a lane and stay to it. Um, I would just say we've been through this so many times where, you know, going back to Debo Samuel, things got really contentious to a point of Debo Samuel expecting to be traded. San Francisco called his bluff, didn't trade him, and he's been here for the last you know, two, three seasons, right? Or going into his third year of his contract. I don't think it's gotten to a point of could this never be fixed? Because guess what? What fixes an athlete that wants to get paid? Getting paid. If Ayuk doesn't want to sign the deal they have on the table, 
then don't sign it. Now, there are pros and cons to that, obviously, but it's not as if Brandon Ayuk could just say, no, I'm good. Let's say San Francisco's offering $26 million and he wants 30. And that $4 million, is this the end-all, be-all? I have to have it. If I don't have it, I'm not going to play. Then don't play. And then do it all over again. Pick a lane, like Robbie Stead and stick to it. Is it possible? Sure. But what happens if Brandon Ayuk decides that, you know what, I'm going to sit this thing out. I'm going to say no until I get my $30 million. Well, let's just put it out there. The San Francisco 49ers hold all the leverage in the Brandon Ayuk negotiations. They have his rights, whether it's under contract, on the fifth-year option. And if they want to get crazy, they could trade him. They hold his rights. And if he decides to hold out, guess what happens? Like they've already fined him $100,000, they'll continue to fine him. They'll continue to rack up those fines. And if he decides and the team decides to not come to the table and shake hands and put pen to paper and this thing lingers on into the season and he doesn't play, guess what? He doesn't get the accrued season and he has to do the same thing all over again next offseason. And if you want to take it even further, let's say Ayuk decides to play on the fifth year option. San Francisco could be jerks about this whole thing and say, you know what? We like you as a player. We don't want to pay you for the, you know, the next five years. We'll give you the franchise tag. San Francisco essentially holds Brandon Ayuk's rights at least for the next two seasons. Ayuk is going nowhere unless he is traded. If he wants to hold out, well, your season doesn't count and you're under contract again next year. And they don't have to pay you and they can continue to fine you. Ayuk holds no leverage, which is exactly what today was the whole purpose of, was trying to drum up, trying to create some leverage in his favor because he has none. If today is successful, let's say it is, right? Let's say Ayuk, the, the world goes crazy, we're talking about it, you're talking about it, uh, and this whole thing works in Ayuk's favor. Okay, cool. Now San Francisco's paid you $30 million a year. This whole thing of creating this, this fake, drawn-up drama to buy you an extra 3 or $4 million dollars the only thing it truly affects is your relationship with the team. And the team is someone that's like, okay, whatever. If you're going to throw a hissy fit and you're going to complain and you're going to put yourself out there and publicly try to shame us, right? That's all this is. Well, while technically that probably isn't the word to use, a lot of this is I'm going to try to publicly get the world, other teams, other players, the fans, and the media on my side so that it makes San Francisco look bad. Now, I'm not saying that Brandon Ayuk is being nefarious. I think Brandon Ayuk, like he has said, wants to be a Niner, wants to stay a Niner, wants to be at a place that where he can get paid and that he can also win a championship. Where's the best place to do so outside of Kansas City? It's San Francisco. Brandon Ayuk knows his bread and butter is staying in the Bay. And if this whole thing works out for him, good. Guess what? It would be no different if they continue to find him and he eventually signed. If you publicly shame San Francisco, the organization, and you sign, it's water under the bridge. You got what you want. You happen to win the negotiation. It's business. If... Take, for example, if Ayuk doesn't show up for all of training camp and continues to rack up fines, what makes that angry receiver happy? Finally putting pen to paper and getting paid. When he gets desperate, oh, you know, I, I, I got fined over you know, a handful of millions of dollars. Man, they're not treating me as I'm Nick Bosa. They're not erasing my fines. What do they do? They panic and they go to the agent and say, just get the deal done. Same thing for San Francisco. And if that happens for Ayuk and he signs, yeah, it stinks. Yeah, it sucks. 
Debo Samuel himself had said, it's hard not to take these things personal. They're playing with your money. They're playing with your livelihood. They're, pl they're, they're playing with who you are as a person. Your future in the NFL, your future with your family. You have so many things to take into account during negotiation. It, it isn't just Ayuk and the organization. It's Ayuk and his wife or girlfriend, his brothers, his mom, his dad, where he wants to live, where he wants to stay, his money, his mental, all these things. And the team is like, look, you want to sign or not? We care about you, but we can find other ways to deal with this. Now, to talk about Bobo's comment here in regards to Ayuk can be traded for picks next season, though. Yeah, Ayuk can get traded for picks in three years' time. But for a team wanting to win now, for a team that's trying to get to the mountaintop this year, what would behoove them? What would benefit them most? Trading Ayuk for future first-round picks or future second-round picks? No. Keeping Ayuk now. Playing even harder ball to retain him for at least one year. The Niners... like, And, and this is the thing. If the Niners wanted to truly manipulate the cap and play mega hardball, shout out Keanu Reeves, what they could do, fifth year option, he plays on it. They don't negotiate a new contract during the offseason. They franchise tag him, then they trade him. That's exactly what they could do. And have the team they trade him to negotiate the new contract while they get a first-round pick back, or whatever the return would be for Ayuk at the time. There is a way San Francisco could get what they want in maximizing this year, and also get what they want in trading Ayuk in one year's time. Now, Ayuk has to sign that tender, I believe, or sign the contract for the one-year franchise tag, but he wouldn't be a free agent then, right? He couldn't hit the open market. <laughs> He can get a franchise tag. <laughs> so there is a way where San Francisco gets the best of both worlds. Of one year maximizing your offense, Ayuk is tired of getting fined, he plays out the entirety of the season, or, 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 or and, once the season's over with, you franchise tag him and trade him, and you keep Debo as receiver number one, you have Pearsall as your receiver number two, or Juwan Jennings is that guy as well, and you move on. And you move on. Uh, Robbie says here, uh, in the YouTube chat, I really like Brandon Ayuk, but I remember he had a case of dropsies early in the season, and his best play of the year was a bit of a fluke. He's great, but he's no AJ or no Justin Jefferson. Um, let's just forget the beginning part. Let's stick with the last sentence. He's great, but Brandon Ayuk is not AJ Brown or Justin Jefferson. That right there is the sticking point. Brandon Ayuk sees the market for receivers. He sees Jalen Waddell and Amon Ross St. Brown and Justin Jefferson. And like any other player would say, well, he's getting that much. I'm worth the same. The issue is <laughs> with the position Brandon Ayuk finds himself in being the receiver number two in the fourth option on this team. Like, there is never a game plan designed for Brandon Ayuk. There's one for Christian McCaffrey. There's one for Debo Samuel. And George Kittle, who usually doesn't have game plans designed for him, plays a position in which they don't have another version of him. Well, Brandon Ayuk is at a position where Debo Samuel is already getting paid. You just drafted Ricky Pearsall and Jacob Cowling, for that matter. You just re-signed and extended Juwan Jennings for two years. Ayuk, while wants to think the market will dictate his worth and value, it's not actually true. If he played for a team, like Robbie says, I trade into the Panthers. If he played for the Panthers, he would have already gotten paid. If he played for Pittsburgh, he would have already gotten paid. If he played for Jacksonville, he would have already gotten paid. The difference is you are not the number one option on the best offense in football. And in fact, you're the fourth option that never has a game plan designed for you. The one 
inkling of, of leverage, if there is any, for Brandon Ayuk is I am Brock Purdy's best receiving weapon and I have the most chemistry with him. And I hate to break it to you, um, Brock Purdy doesn't really seem to have bad chemistry with anybody. Now, that said, there is a clear distinction of when he throws to Ayuk, the anticipation those two guys have compared to Debo and Jennings and others. Um, but also, they're going to, like San Francisco would just say, is your chemistry worth $30 million a year? Now, I am someone that doesn't believe the Pearsall draft pick was to replace Ayuk. I believe it was to replace Debo. We've talked plenty of times. It gives San Francisco another option, a second option that is a, an incredible route runner and separator. And if Debo's gone in one year's time, I mean, then you have Pearsall and Ayuk. But let's say, hypothetically... Ricky Pearsall comes into training camp and crushes it. And he's beating people like Isaac Yadam and Lenore and Mooney Ward. And he's making starters on this defense look like, you know, look foolish, right? He's beating these guys out of the breaks. He looks faster and stronger and quicker. And he looks like and he's building chemistry with Brock Purdy. I do think there is a world. Now, what's the possibility? What's the probability? I wouldn't say it's too high, but there is a world. There is, an, there is a chance where Ayuk continues to hold out, where Ayuk continues to say, give me 30 or give me death, give me 30 or get me traded out of here. Meanwhile, Pearsall is running that thing around Purdy's finger, and there it is, two peas in the pod, crushing it in training camp. And Kyle Shanahan says, look, we want to pay him, being Brandon Ayuk. We want to extend him. I want him to be here. I love B.A. I drafted B.A. I fist-pumped when we selected him in the first round. We traded up for this guy. I want to make sure he's here for the long haul. But we can survive a month. The only clear-cut leverage, or maybe not, it's not even leverage, but the best case scenario for Brandon Ayuk would be San Francisco going into week number one without him and losing. If San Francisco somehow started the year one and three and Ayuk isn't there, that's when things are like, get him in here now, give him $30 million, and the offense looks stagnant, Purdy's not looking great, Pearsall ain't playing well, and Debo looks like a shell of him, you know, his former self. That's the only thing that can really sway this back in Ayuk's direction. Even this morning, the video he posted, talking to an opposing team's quarterback, right, even that will not give him the leverage to get $30 million a year. Because all it is, is a drawn up fake. And look, they're friends, Jaden Daniels and Ayuk. I don't think there's a connection between Jaden Daniels and the commanders to Ayuk. San Francisco ain't trading people to Washington. He's, they're getting people from Washington most of the time. <coughs> Excuse me. I don't think we're going to you know, live in a world where in a month time or two months time, they're trading Ayuk away. I get the commanders or our young team, Adam Peters, there's more connections there. But San Francisco is also extremely fickle, not just in contract negotiations, but with trades, but with trades. San Francisco wouldn't give the Panthers a first round pick. They said, we'll give you a second round pick and a third round pick and a fourth round pick and a third round pick for Chris McCaffrey, the reigning offensive player of the year. San Francisco would accept no less than a high second round pick right around the end of round number one or a mid first rounder. San Francisco had offers on the table for Brandon Ayuk. None of them were first round picks. They continue to say, no, we're good. No, we're good. 
Now, again, if you want to get into way in the future, and keep in mind, I do think Brandon Ayuk gets signed. I do think he will re-sign and get extended by the Niners. But him saying all this stuff this morning, they don't want me to be here. (laughs) All John Lynch is doing is laughing, saying, (laughs) okay, we've done this before. And look how that turned out. The guy got paid anyways. If you just be patient, if you just wait this thing out, you'll get your money. But let's let's live in the, the distant future of 2025. San Francisco plays out the season. They win, they lose, doesn't matter. Ayuk's on the fifth-year option. They go into next year. The receiver class, from my understanding... And not as deep as this past year's historic class was. You franchise tag Ayuk, free agency is passed. You go into the draft saying, hey, we like this guy. He don't want to stay here, but we like him. Who wants him? You have a franchise tag player and you can go into the extension talks immediately after. And in fact... If they traded Ayuk during a next year's draft or before next year's draft on a franchise tag, then you just say goodbye, get your first round pick back, and do what you do. That would be the exact same thing as the Forrest Buckner minus the franchise tag, right? It would be giving the other team the opportunity. It's like in baseball, right? Juan Soto, the Padres trade for him, hoping they can extend him. He don't want to be there. They trade him away to the Yankees because the Yankees are like, well, we'll get you to New York. Come here, visit the city, short porch and right field, Aaron Judge and Carlos Stanton, Garrett Cole, historic franchise, 27 championships. Give him a taste of what it's like here and hope he'll want to stay. That same thing would happen for Brandon Ayuk for a young upcoming team. And in this case, I wouldn't be surprised if it was the Panthers. Like Robbie already said, you have Bryce Young. You're trying to figure things out. You have a new GM in one year's time. Hey, we won six games this year. We are a top five pick. We'll give San Francisco our second round pick this year. If they actually have it, who knows? But you get what I'm saying. That San Francisco holds all this leverage, not just now, but next year. (laughs) That's what today was, though. That that is simply what today was. And and to retort Brandon Ayuk doing this, when has San Francisco ever blinked in negotiations? When have they ever said, okay, we'll give you what you want? The only time I can think of that is Nick Bosa. And even that negotiation went down to the wire of he may not be here week number one. But of all the players they've tried to re-sign, Nick Bosa had the most leverage of I'm the reigning defensive player of the year. Your defense is you know surrounding me, revolves around me. Ayuk doesn't have that. In my opinion, there is nothing to see here other than a wide receiver trying to get paid and a team being the Niners unwilling to meet his current asking price of an assumed $30 million mirroring Amon Ross St. Brown or even Justin Jefferson's record-breaking deal. There's no one to blame either. It's just part of the game. But again, San Francisco has never blinked. Ayuk is the only one truly out of beneficial options. He can't go anywhere. He can't do anything outside of asking for a trade, and even then, his trade market has dried up. Teams that need a receiver have already got their receivers in the draft. There's nowhere to go. He's put in a box of either re-sign or don't. Either way, you are still a San Francisco 49er, so what has he done? He's resorted to drawing up some fake drama to put some pressure on San Francisco to hopefully pay them what he believes he's worth. And and look, to the people saying, I'm sick of this, I'm tired of this, blah, blah, blah. Guess what? Don't hate the player. Hate the game. Hate the game. And, and I can say with confidence, Brandon Ayuk right now hates the game because San Francisco is currently winning 
And the expectation is they're up three games to one. And they have one more move to put this thing away. And that's when the fines come in in training camp. That's when things get real. That's when the preseason starts and Ayuk sees that pocketbook start to shake. And he sees that money value in his account go from minus 30,000, minus 30,000, minus 30,000, minus a million. My, he's like, what is going on? I need to get paid. And I'm currently sitting here on my couch putting in work when I could be out there with a brand new contract putting in work. His only option is to hold out and pray, pray San Francisco loses a few games to begin the year. That's the last ditch effort to get paid $30 million. But what are the odds San Francisco is one in four or one in three to begin the year? Could they lose against the Jets week one? Sure, they could. The odds they are one in three at the end of the first month of the season, slim to none. And, and guess what? Ayuk is a pivotal part of the team. He's just the fifth, sixth pivotal part of the offense, though. Purdy, McCaffrey, Trent Williams, Debo Samuel, George Kittle. That's already five people. And I can argue Kyle Shanahan, he's the seventh guy. You don't pay your seventh guy $30 million. And, and Bolo does say this, that the Niners did fold during the Trent Williams negotiations. You're right. You're right. Uh, San Francisco heard Chiefs offered Trent a massive deal. San Francisco said, can't let that happen. We have to keep Mahomes away from having the best left tackle in football. So yes, Bosa and Trent Williams, they did fold. You are correct, Bobo. Um, Forktail, Forktail Devil P380J says, if BA is hoping the Niners fall apart without him, he's tripping. Exactly. That's why we're here. That's why as of this morning, he's talking to a close friend, ASU teammates, now in the NFL together, putting things on TikTok. He's following the Debo Samuel route of if I can get people behind me, if I can make things sound more serious, the issue is it's too late. Debo Samuel did all of this pre-draft. That's like, whether it was on here, whether it was on 95.7 The Game's draft coverage, I had said over and over and over again, as soon as the draft passes, it's over. It's over. Because then, get what? guess what happens? Teams have, have filled their needs, they have filled their holes, they have the guys they want. It's very rare a team that actually wants to extend the player then trades said player after the draft for picks in one year's time. It just doesn't really ever happen, especially for a team like San Francisco wanting to win now. Moving Ayuk would actively hurt their chances of winning. And Ayuk holding out trying to make this fake drama of will they, won't they, they don't want me to be here. Which again, I'm sure San Francisco said, I'm sure they said, we love you, buddy. We love you a lot. Ladybug catch, great player. Our leading target getter the last two years. Yang caught 80 passes a year and we're not paying you $30 million. So we want you to be here. We don't want you at the $30 million price tag though. So take that as you will, but... You're not Amon Ross St. Brown. You are not A.J. Brown. You're not Justin Jefferson. But all of this is to put pressure on San Francisco. But San Francisco is sitting back with their hands behind their head, sipping a lemonade in Cabo, like, ah, ah, easy. They're not even thinking about this. You want to know why? They hold all the cards. Ayuk is trying to hopefully steal a card back because if he can and it works then he's created some leverage and you know for himself but i mean come on if the niners well i do not believe san francisco was sending a message to Ayuk by re-signing jennings and extending chris mccaffrey and restructuring his contract and giving him a raise i do believe Ayuk could have taken that as a message of you're paying these guys first then you hear the reports of Trent Williams might want a new deal. 
And if Jeremy Fowler of ESPN is to believe that the, the negotiations between Ayuk and San Francisco are basically dead at the moment. They, they both sides want to get a deal done. But right now in the negotiations, there really isn't, and I quote this here, not much optimism of getting a deal done in the next six weeks. Now, we are six weeks, a month and a half away from, you know, August and preseason and all this stuff happening. But when Iduk isn't there on training camp day one, you know who cares? Nobody. Because the offense will still work the same way it did, theoretically, without him. That doesn't say he's not going to be missed because he's a great player. Of course he is. But it's not like San Francisco wasn't successful pre-Brandon Ayuk. It's not like they haven't been successful without Brandon Ayuk. And again, look, I hate to keep bringing this up because I want him to get paid. He deserves to get paid. And I have an idea of what he should get paid. It don't matter to me. I want Ayuk to, to walk out of Levi Stadium with a pen in hand, on the paper, signed contract, social media posts, because I know he's put in the work to get paid. He deserves to get his money. Brandon Ayuk did nothing when this team lost three consecutive games in the middle of last year. Brandon Ayuk did nothing when Debo Samuel wasn't on the field. That is not true number one receiver play. Now, that doesn't mean that it's not in there. That doesn't mean that he can't rise above or rise to new heights. That's the hope that once he signs the contract, he doesn't do what Debo did and come into camp out of shape and then have to tell the media that I hated what I put on film last year. I never want it to happen again. To be constantly injured and broken and bruised because of the way he plays. And that's no shot at Debo. It's just what happened. The hope is that Ayuk can be better and different than Debo. And I think while today was an example of him kind of taking the Debo Samuel route of trying to create some pressure and drama to push back against San Francisco, overwhelmingly he's done everything different than Debo. Didn't ask for a trade, been working out constantly, his body's right, posting videos of himself working out, not taking things public prior to today, his agent openly kind of pushing back against uh, trade offers that were out there on social media, and the fact that, you know, even after the draft or during the draft, he could have easily said, get me out of here. He never did. What does that tell you? He wants to be here. If you don't want to be here, you would say, I don't want to be here. And look, I'm not getting paid millions of dollars. I'm not the one that's looking for a new contract. I'll tell you this, though. If you're unhappy and you're at your job, usually you openly say, I'm unhappy. I want to leave my job. I've done it. I'm sure you've done it. Now, unless you're getting paid millions of dollars, you keep your lips zipped and keep your, you know, keep your head down and keep working for the paycheck, right? But if you're not getting paid what you think you're worth, which Ayuk obviously doesn't think he's getting paid what he thinks he's worth, worth and he's unhappy, he would say, pay me or get me out of here. It's a human instinct to say, I'm unhappy. I want to leave. Ayuk hasn't done that yet. And because he waited this long... He can't do that now because San Francisco will just say, okay, cool, sit at home. You're only hurting yourself. You are only hurting yourself unless we lose the first four games of the year and they're like, get back here, we need you. But Ayuk's not helping anybody because what does today do? Tomorrow, does, does the price tag go up? No. Everyone that's supposed to get signed got signed, even T. Higgins Jefferson got big money. Jamar Chase probably going to get paid big money. And T. Higgins, the other guy that was in Ayuk's camp, oh, I don't want to play on the, the franchise tag. Fifth year option is my last year of my deal. I want to get paid. What did he do? He signed the contract tender for one year because he didn't have any leverage anymore. He wasn't traded pre-draft. He wasn't traded during the draft. He couldn't do anything afterwards. 
T. Higgins and Brandon Ayuk are the same. And the Bengals just watched T. Higgins blink, and it gave them leverage. San Francisco is waiting for Brandon Ayuk to blink because they sure as hell won't be the ones doing that. San Francisco is not going to blink. They are unafraid to walk into week one without Brandon Ayuk. I guarantee you that. Now, I don't think that happens, but I can guarantee you they're okay with doing that if it means saving two to four million dollars. To get in the price tag they want, they're okay doing that. That's who they are. It's how they continue to get these guys signed. And with the you know, with the future of we have to pay Brock Purdy, it would help them to pay Ayuk now. Of course it would. You save money. San Francisco could feasibly walk into this year, and if you don't spend any money next year, with roughly $40 million in rollover cap, you think that wouldn't help? <laughs> like, this isn't going to happen with Brock Purdy. They're going to pay him the minute the season ends. Season's over, boom, here's your paycheck. Here's your new contract. Ayuk ain't that. Ayuk is, we have to be fickle with you to pay Brock Purdy, to keep Debo Samuel around, to re-sign Hufunga, to re-sign Lenore and Mooney Ward and others on this defense and on the offense, to re-sign Aaron Banks and others. Ayuk, unfortunately, is the victim of the circumstance he was drafted into, but also he didn't help himself in the way he negotiated during the year. He was too nice. He was too nice. Now, I'm not saying or advocating for him to be Debo and ask for trades and whatnot, but if he wants to get paid $30 million, it would have helped his case to be Debo and say, get me out of here. I'm not playing. I'm done unless you pay me $30 million. The issue is, was the market for receivers was not there. There were 11 guys that had first round grades on them or near first round grades in the draft. Ayuk has had zero leverage all year long. And especially knowing who the Niners are, he's not going to have any leverage for the next year and a half. Even if he plays on the fifth year option. They want to pay him. He has no leverage. Today absolutely changed nothing. Nothing. They don't want me here. Yeah, not at $30 million. But when Ayuk blinks, guess he'll be standing there with the pen and paper in hand saying, you want 26, my friend? It'll be John Lynch, Jed York, and Prague Marate. Because that's how they do. They do not blink. San Francisco would stare into the eye of the storm and say, hmm, pay receiver number two or blink. <laughs> okay, no. no, it's not happening. It's not happening. Can they? Yeah. Will they? Probably. But not at anything other than their asking price. And that's where we are today. He's not going to the commanders. He's not getting traded. And unless it does happen, which by all means would blow me away. Would blow me away. But Jaden Daniels in the conversation, they're just friends. Arizona State teammates, now they're in the NFL, there is no link between them. The fact that his girlfriend or fiance or wife is out there recording it like, we're going to get paid, got, got me vlogging this, you know what? Yeah, nothing, you're not going to get an extra million dollars because you vlogged him talking to his friend while he laughs saying, they don't want me, they want you. You want to be here. You openly said that. You cried in front of your locker room and said, I want to be a San Francisco 49er. <laughs> Man, it, it stinks because Ayuk has done almost everything right other than this morning. And when players do that, you want them to get paid a higher price than they normally would if they were playing hardball. But today... If anything, it negatively impacts him. Because then San Francisco says, okay, we're just going to dig our heels in a little deeper. If you want to play games, you want to go on social media, you want to do this and that, okay, cool. That's fine. You want to be like Clay Thompson and scrub your Instagrams and, and your social media of us? Cool. The difference is, unlike Clay Thompson, who's a free agent, man, 
Like, this is... <laughs> you're under contract, buddy. Uh, Forktail Devil says this in the YouTube chat. Says, didn't Ayuk want this whole situation, though? He waited until other receivers got paid so he can get the most possible. You're right. You're right. The issue is, I think Ayuk was waiting, like... I don't think he was waiting for Jefferson to get paid. I would not be surprised. I'm not a reporter. I have no insight here. I would not be surprised if San Francisco started negotiations at $24 million. And they've gone up a little bit. But that's only my speculation. That's just, you know, what I think could have happened. I would like to believe knowing San Francisco, who again is extremely, you know, they are penny pinchers with the money. I would not be surprised, <clears throat> excuse me, if they lowballed him to a point of disrespect of like, here's $24 million. He was like, are you serious? Waited this thing out. San Francisco saw a couple guys get paid, said, here's $26 million. He was like, no, now I'm watching Waddle and St. Brown and Jefferson get paid 30 or 28 plus million dollars. I'm better than one of those guys. I want that. And San Francisco said, no. Ayuk did put himself in a situation almost to fail. Again, like I said, he played nice for the last three months. Unfortunately, when you play nice, you know, nice guys finish last. Sometimes that's the saying, right? In this case, Ayuk's going to finish last. He's going to sign last, and he's not going to get what he wanted out of this whole thing. And I love him for playing nice. I love him for being an upstanding player with the team. Now, we have no idea what the team said. The team could be horrible, for all we know. But we don't know anything like that. And, and so all you can look at is what's in front of us. Ayuk has not been the number one receiver ever on this team. He's not going to get what other number one receivers are getting, like Amon Ross St. Brown or Jefferson, because those guys are everything to their offenses. San Francisco could walk into this year and go 4-0 to begin the year. Without Ayuk. Then what happens? You're going to sign for $26 million. I guarantee you are. It's not going to help you. Because if you don't, you have to go through the whole thing all over again. So yes, Ayuk did want this situation. It backfired. Some people would say, San Francisco botched the negotiations. No, Ayuk botched the negotiations because San Francisco has all the leverage and there's no way for, or there's nowhere for Ayuk to go. It's all in San Francisco's hands and Ayuk is pleading to get some leverage back in a game of tug and war. And today was an, an attempt to get some back. We're all talking about it. The issue is we've been through this five, six times already and once with the receiver who didn't play nice and got his way. Ayuk played nice and he's not going to get his way. Now I think Ayuk gets paid eerily similar to Jalen Waddle's contract, which I think would be a sweet spot for him. A top tier receiver number two. But, you know, it just... San Francisco didn't botch this. Ayuk botched this. And now we got to sit back and wait until training camp and hopefully things get done. Because if they don't, again, that will be another step into the, this is not a word, but the botulation of the negotiations by Brandon Ayuk. It's just, that's where we're at now. Ayuk's just pleading for some leverage here with his social media video today. But he has none. And the video didn't change anything. Didn't change a single thing. That's all I have for you today. Thank you guys so much. In the chat, Bobo, Forktail Devil, Robbie439, Ernie Chavez, 957 Doobie Winner. <laughs> That's great. Uh, Niner Gang 209, Jimmy. Thank you guys so much for watching, listening. Uh, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to the show. We just hit over 1,000 subscribers. Thank you so much. If you like the content you just watched for the last hour, tell your friends, tell your family, let's get a bigger community in here talking Niner football. Let's hit 2,000. 
1K ain't the ending point. That, that was not Thanos. That was not the end game. We're continuing to grow and grow and grow. And thank you guys so much for being a part of this. Um, again, 1K means so much to me. I, I, I ran into my bedroom with my wife and I said, babe, we got 1K. And she was like, yay. <laughs> so thank you guys so much for that. Really appreciate it. If you're a father, hope you had a wonderful Father's Day. I got my dad a dugout mug. Went and saw my wife's dad yesterday. He had their barbecue and some chicken. It was phenomenal. Uh, but thank you guys so much and have a great rest of your week. I'm sure I'll see you guys very soon, but let's see what happens with Brandon Ayuk in the next few weeks. What do you think happens with Ayuk? Would you pay him $30 million? Does his they don't want me here video change anything for you or are you just done with the whole situation and this fast forwarding to week number one against the new york jets uh, don't forget to follow us on social media at 49ers underscore access is the twitter or x at 49ers dot access is the instagram and if you want to go to any sports game any concert or event whether it be the nba finals one game left who's gonna win right uh probably the celtics but i digress if you want to watch some baseball this year or you want to start buying your niner tickets early use promo code 49ers access 49 ers acc ess at seatgeek Dot com and save yourself $20 off your first purchase. My name is Sterling Bennett, and until next time, stay faithful. <laughs>